three, two, and thank you very much for joining us again on Live from the Heartland. We're here every Saturday morning in the corner, lovely corner of Glenwood and Lunt. Normally I'm here with my uh, partner of 36 years and counting, um, Michael James, but he, his wife Paige, and a bunch of other Chicagoans uh, trekked out to Washington State this weekend to enroll their sons in Evergreen Evergreen College out in Olympia, Washington. So a big shout out to them. They're probably still asleep, but if I know Michael, he's listening in and I'm, he's streaming live this show. So greetings to you all out there on the West Coast and uh, good luck, Kadian. Mm, buckle down, baby. It's school time. Um, hey, neighbors. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, Katie. I got Pam and Lan up here. We were we had a little bit of a teaser last week with these two, our neighbors and friends, and great activists themselves who are part of sponsoring the uh, upcoming Chicago Bioneers Conference. This is terribly exciting. It's yeah, fun. we are. I got. I just got to say right away. Okay. This 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 show is well put together. We are proud chicken keepers. Just want to say that, uh -huh. <laughs> and part of the whole chicken movement in Chicago. So another link as we go forward. Michael just texted to say he's listening. Oh, good job. Great. Do we not hey, love um, technology? I mean. Jeez. So yeah, we're in the pioneers. Uh, yes, I would call the home stretch. We're about seven weeks out of uh, a big event, um, which uh, we initiated oh quite a number of months ago, and we have uh, partnered with the University of Illinois uh, Chicago uh, campus and mm -hmm. uh, the Pierce Family Foundation and many other volunteers and supporters. And on November second through the fourth. We are going to bring the first annual Great Lakes Bioneer Chicago to our fine city. All right, starting with the start. What the heck is Bioneers? Okay. That's a, that's a great question and one that uh, I would have had it's a couple of years obvious. ago. It's not that course, great. It's just, not you know. Not everybody knows <laughs> what Bioneers is. It's, uh, Bioneers is a, a, a kind of a compound or a fusion word, biological pioneers, and it's, it's really uh, it, it can apply to individuals or to a, our gathering and, and really it's a movement of folks who think that the best approach to solving our greatest social, environmental, and economic challenges has to occur through the lens of the earth. We have to live within the limits of our planetary system wow. and our planet and, and uh, you know, that would involve with, an, a huge scaling back of what's going on right now as we speak. I think it has to. It changes many things that yeah. we're doing. It's a different, different paradigm. It's not necessarily. I, mean, I, I think it's a wonderful vision, and it in, that, that we're um, trying to approach here. But yeah, and I, I would call it uh, a gathering of innovators and visionaries right here in Chicago who are doing awfully terrific things that we don't know about that are following that guide, the lens of the earth, nature's principles. And, and I would also say that I think it's such an important concept uh, because the solutions we need for all of our challenges, whether they be economic or whether they be environmental or whether they be social, can be found by looking at nature and the principles that nature espouses. And we've got folks who are coming, the coming to this. The patterns that connect. Yeah, who are going to be able to, to, to look at uh, some of these solutions, lift them up and say, hey folks, if we do these things, we not only are going to stop harming our planet, we're going to ensure our survival. We've got a fossil record of 3.8 billion years to look at to know what works and what doesn't. We'll ensure our survival. We can bring about just solutions through cooperation and kinship and diversity and all of the principles that I think we're going to talk about at this conference. And I find it as exciting as can be. I can hardly stand it. Yeah. Uh, and it. And it's folks right here in Chicago that, no, that are thrilling. being lifted up as it's, well as... It's thrilling that, you yeah. guess, that it's happening here in Chicago. Um, and I like that it's called the Great Lakes Pioneers <clears throat> Gathering. Because uh, there were years, for, for many years, I used to attend the Great Lakes Bioregional Conference, okay. which went on for, well, I don't know, six to eight, ten years, I guess, mm -hmm. that brought people, activists of the same ilk, not quite the same biomimicry, all of that sort of 
stuff going on. But I think setting the groundwork for this sort of thing, these, these ideas in people's minds, but it's so time for folks who are gathered and live on the Great Lakes to talk to each other, to understand the incredible job we have of stewardship around these Great Lakes, the 120th, uh, let's see, one-fifth yeah. of the world's right. fresh exactly. water supply. Yep. So you've got, I mean, I, I know you've got Vandana Shiva coming, who is a hero of mine. I don't know if everybody out there knows her. Oh, we do. We, we do. We have a, this is, this has taken the shape, we call it, and sometimes call it a conference, we call it more of a gathering. Gathering this, is good. This is not an, an academic sit in your seat and listen to talking heads tell you all they know. Uh, this is going to be interactive. We have uh, a number of headline uh, speakers, including you know Vandana Shiva, who is mm -hmm. one of them, very important. We're going to have about 40 plus workshops on a variety of different subjects, and this is going to be interspersed with music and dance and poetry and celebration. This is all a very positive event, and Excellent. we want people to get out of their heads, all those very serious discussions and interactions going on, but this is this is a very different kind of interaction we want. Well, to isn't that one way to imitate nature? Oh, it is. It is. And we're lifting up Chicago's diversity along the way, so I think that's that's a positive thing, too. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is a hallmark that uh, of the event that we're putting together is a space, the entire three-day period, where people can come together and continue the dialogue. And so we want, we want folks not to, as Lance said, just sit there and be, quote, entertained or hear new and innovative ideas, although that will happen, right. but also be so motivated by what they heard to say, all right, I'm excited about this. I want to work on this. You're here. I'm here. They're here. Let's all get together and figure this thing out. And what are we going to do to pull our resources and our skills together? Another principle of nature, right? Right. We, if you look at a systems approach, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a diversity of folks, a diversity of skills to come together to to make a whole. And so uh, so that that's going to be going on the entire weekend. Some of it will be facilitated. Some of it will be self-guided. But, uh, but it's, it's it's a way of taking us beyond a three-day event into something that lives and continues as we move forward. So Bioneers, as we look at it today, is getting launched, and we, we expect this to be uh, an initiative that continues for the next 12 months. Something else will happen in a year from now. Mm -hmm. That something else needs to yet be defined. Right. But, uh, and that's exciting, too. That's so. very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you were just um, talking to someone uh, fresh, a lot of our listeners, pioneers you've de you've you've described, um, go a little bit further because um, I used the word I was seeing in your notes, biomimicry, yeah. um, which you sort of have already des described a little bit. But what does it look like to actively embrace this lifestyle? Because I know you two do. Uh, we try. You yeah. reflect on a journey. in your lifestyle. Yeah. You know what all of this is in your front yard, your backyard, and, and how you walk each day. Um, let people feel more a part of this because I think a whole lot of people have these thoughts in their minds. A whole lot of folks understand, you know, f starting with the notion of the population bomb 30 years ago, um, what, what's at stake here? Go ahead. Well, I, I would say what, what, what's exciting to me is the term biomimicry, which has similar connotations to biological pioneers or pioneers, is something that is now just coming together in Chicago. There's a group that's been formed called Biomimicry Chicago, and the folks that are behind that include uh, uh, individuals like uh, uh, Lindsay James from Interface, which is a global uh, corporation on sustainability, Amy Kaufman Phillips, who is just formed the Bee Collaborative, uh, focused solely on biomimicry and nature's uh, design. She's an architect. And a couple other architects whose names are Robert Weber and, and, and uh, uh, Colin Roffling, I think I've got them all here, mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, who are going to be presenters. And I think they're looking at things as simple as how do we take our buildings, I mean we talk about our building stock here in Chicago as, as being old, much of it, and built at a time when fossil fuels were plentiful, and we didn't think about our environment. That's right. We didn't, th we just, we just, we were in the fossil fuel party, right? 
Yeah. You got you got the fuel. You mm -hmm. can put it up. It doesn't have to be energy Eat efficient. It. You use, it. use a lot of power Burn to it. run it, etc. Well, things have changed. Right. You know, and 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 the and the more we know about the impacts of fossil fuels on climate, and the more we know about the uh, the fossil fuels and the peaking of both coal and oil, etc., the more we know we have to make a change. So, what do you do with buildings? Uh, what do you do to bring them into a position where they're not only energy efficient, but work within their context, the landscape, and actually generate their own power and right. generate a surplus of power. How do they do that? How do you use nature's principles to figure that out? So, so we've got some architects who are going to lay out the basic principles of biomimicry. Here's an example that I think is simple. Um, one of, the, one of the things that I think is, is simple to understand, and Lane can tell another one, is, is, is the, uh, the humpback whale. If you've ever looked at the humpback whale and how they glorious leap out of the water, and how efficiently they move mm -hmm. you know, throughout, throughout the ocean. Uh, researchers studied how they, how they, how they function and, look, and noticed that they've got a pattern of, of, of uh, I'm going to call them bumps, bumps on their Bumps on the back. Right. So they, they said, well, oh, what no. if, this is, if this is what's making them move so efficiently? through the air, what if we took that principle and applied it to the, the wings of an airplane, and they did, and fuel efficiency increased by 30%. I mean, that's, that's a simple example. Um, there's another example that, that MIT researchers yeah, have early, been looking at. Earlier this year, there was a study that uh, came out. MIT researchers and another uh, organization in Germany were investigating how to appropriately uh, aggregate uh, solar reflectors uh, for concentrated solar power mm -hmm. and uh, the problem that they had was in order to make sure that each cell uh, reflector didn't reflect into another one and lose efficiency they had to use a lot of land area mm. they did a study they realized that the sunflower was the perfect model the florets in the center of the, the mm. flower had an alignment that was perfectly uh, uh, designed so that uh, if the researchers took these solar uh, reflectors and lined them up the same way, they got the maximum uh, efficiency and reduced the amount of land area necessary. So that's just one. That's Biomimicry one is, is one part of this uh, so discussion. So I would think permaculture oh, figures time. in, um, which I'm fascinated by. And uh, Milton Dixon from our own community will be doing uh, work on permaculture. We've got, we're going to be dealing with uh, urban agriculture, climate change, um, group decision making. Uh -huh. uh, another another example. I like, also see in the list spirituality. You betcha. Yeah. Starhawk. 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 I took Hawk. a permaculture class with her oh, a couple gosh. years ago out in San Francisco. She her title is the magic of co-creation, and yes. I think and I think that says it all for me because we need to be co-creators in this endeavor as we move forward together, right? Instead of looking at the earth as something that we exploit to our benefit, we need to recognize we are part of the whole and. And anything we do impacts and affects everything else. Everything is connected. So, so how can we work with our systems? How can we work in harmony with nature? How can we cooperate as people uh, to bring about uh, a future that that is going to be truly holistic and sustainable? And 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 I, I think the other the other thing I'm really excited about too. One of the the examples in our our fine city of of people doing pioneering work is John A of the plant. Yes. Uh, oh man, that is, that is such an example of what you can do with a resource that other people said it should be discarded. That's right. You know, uh, a 90,000 manufacturing building in the back of the yards with all kinds of history. Uh, you know. You mean a 90,000 square foot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Big, good. Huge. Yeah. Huge. yeah. There was a missing piece there. It's, it's oh, what they say? Yes. <laughs> it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> so, so, and to be able to turn this into uh, not only the vertical farm with the food component, but also uh, a a business incubator that provides employment through through food related There's businesses. There's room there for a lot of things. And all of the all of the uh, the waste that is generated from the systems and the businesses is are then funneled into their anaerobic digester which provides heating and cooling and it's truly a closing the loop system yeah. right there with an old building that exists already. Right. So so I mean those those folks and the kinds of things you're going to hear about I think are truly the pioneers both in Chicago and and some that we're importing from India like Vandana Shiva uh -huh. <laughs> uh, to, to, to kind of challenge us and motivate us to move on. You know um, 
we got to know each other a few years back, um, specifically around um, mountaintop removal. Yes. That's right. Um, which continues as we speak. Uh, and is um, I, I hate to go from something so exciting and joyful as the um, the Great Lakes Pioneers gathering to this terribly sad uh, ongoing blasphemy of coal mine coal mining efforts. Uh, they decided it was e easier at some point just to take the top off the mountain and go straight down to get right. to extract coal. And and it seems like um, you know I watched two national political conventions a couple weeks ago. Nowhere was it mentioned uh, anything. I, I never hear anybody say anything about um, mountaintop removal except for the folks living there, people like you, activists, who are trying to put a halt to it. And it's just such an appalling uh, well, fact of life. There's, there's more news there because since we last talked to you about mountaintop mining uh, removal, removal mining, we have